Hey y'all, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Natalie and on my channel I create mostly home related videos, also some lifestyle videos occasionally. And today's video is about home and one of my favorite topics, which is DIY. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I have done many DIY projects. I've shared a lot of them on my channel, but there are also some that I have not shared, at least in great detail on my channel. So today we're taking a little trip down memory lane, doing a little bit of a casual sit down video, reminiscing on some of my favorite DIY projects that I have done in my home. My hope is that this inspires you to, to tackle some projects in your home that you maybe didn't think that you could do. I had never done any DIYs before moving into this home two years ago. And now not only have I refinished furniture pieces, I've done accent walls, I've done, you know, shelves, we've redone rooms. Things have definitely been a um, trial and error, a little bit of a learning curve and I just want to share it with y'all because I don't want anybody to ever feel like they can't attain something that they want. You really can do it if you do enough research um, and just give it a shot. Be willing to do it. If it doesn't work out, it just didn't work out. So this might be a little bit of a chatty video. So get yourself something to drink. I'm drinking a nice coffee right now and let's get into the little chat about my favorite DIY projects. We are going to be counting down my top five DIY projects. So starting at number five, is my dresser in my guest room. So this was a paint and refinishing furniture kind of DIY project. I found this dresser for, I believe, $30 on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I remember seeing it and it was the perfect size for the space in our guest room. And I loved the little details on it. It has like a really cool kind of um, embellishment on the drawers. It's got some scalloped detail on the bottom. And I just thought it was a really great piece all in all. It's not in the best shape, like the drawers don't pull out and in super easy, but it is in a guest room, so it doesn't really get opened very much. I might at some point use it for storage, but I haven't had to yet, um, so that hasn't been an issue. But for 30 bucks, it was really not a huge deal if it didn't open and close very well. So for this project, I did just use some Fusion Mineral Paint in the color, I believe the color is Lichen, Lichen? I'll put it in the description below. Um, but I just used a little container of that paint. Maybe it was like a pint. I'm not sure. It was not very much paint that it required. I used a roller brush to paint it. That's all I did. I think I did two coats and then I sealed the top of it with a clear polycrylic or polyurethane. I like a glossy finish just because then I feel like it's really finished and done um, and won't scratch. So that's what I did on the top. And then I replaced the hardware with some hardware that I found on Amazon. And that was it. Super simple and all very affordable. Um, I think the paint might cost like 10 bucks at the antique store that they sell it near me. And then the dresser was 30. The poles I'm guessing were probably like 10 to 15, so $50 for a dresser about, um, really can't beat that. So I'm really glad we did that project. I love Facebook Marketplace. I've gotten many things off of Facebook Marketplace as you'll, you'll continue to hear about through this video, but definitely a great place to buy things. Please be safe on Facebook Marketplace. I know there's a lot of scams out there. Uh, my husband went with me to get this piece and luckily it was just a nice couple trying to get rid of some things. So um, that was my fifth favorite DIY project that I've done in my home. Number four would be my laundry room renovation. So if y'all have been here, you saw me do that laundry room renovation. I did a whole video on it and I actually will link it down below in case you wanna see the before and afters. The laundry room project actually involved several DIY projects in one. So not only did I create an accent wall using a paint sponge technique, like I took a side of a sponge dipped it in paint and just like stamped it on the wall and made this like design. Um, really fun for a laundry room and a lot cheaper than wallpaper or doing like an accent wall. Um, I'm really glad I did it in that space because of all the rooms, like I'm not sure my laundry room is something I wanna invest a ton of money into. So to be able to do that little accent wall, but very affordably, and if I would have messed it up or something, it wasn't, it's not a huge deal because it's just paint, you can paint over it and also it's a laundry room. So if you have a room like that, that's kind of low risk, but you do wanna add a little something to it, I highly recommend doing that sponge technique, especially if you're somebody who, like me, I don't mind if things aren't perfect. So if you're somebody who it's gonna drive you crazy if the line isn't perfectly spaced and symmetrical and parallel and all that, then maybe don't do this. But for me, it's totally fine. I like the way it looks kind of not perfect. Um, so I did that on the wall and then I did my own shelves by staining them getting some planks of wood, staining them, um, sealing them, and then hanging them up with brackets, all from Home Depot. And then I didn't do this part of it, my husband did it, but we have a folding shelf now on our, across the top of our appliances where we can fold laundry. And he actually built that, I'm not sure how, he did it one day when I was at work and it's it was just done. So 
that looks great as well. So multiple little projects in this room renovation. And again, I will link that video down below if you wanna kind of get a bigger picture, but I love the way the laundry room turned out. It makes it so much more pleasant to have to be in there often because you know we go through laundry pretty quickly. So number three would be my board and batten wall in the entryway. So y'all have seen this recently in my entryway makeover, which I'll also link that below. This is one project that I didn't film, unfortunately. I did this project on a little um, social media hiatus that I did last summer, and I really love how it turned out. It just added a lot of character to our entryway, and it's really functional. That was my goal for the space, was to make it an entryway where we could actually utilize the space. So I did an accent board and batten wall. I just bought some wood planks. I think they were MDF um, boards. I used some caulking, some paint, and some wood glue, or not wood glue, liquid nails, and then the nail gun. So I basically cut the MDF, I used liquid nails to adhere it to the wall, used the nail gun to stick it into some studs, um, and then I just caulked the, um, the borders so that it was flush with the wall and the pieces together, like if it was multiple pieces of wood, and then painted it. So I used Sherwin-Williams, I believe it's, iron ore, yes, it's definitely iron ore, um, to paint it. And I used a set of rollers, paint brushes. I needed like a little teeny tiny paint brush for the corner. Um, and it's definitely not perfect, but it works totally fine. And then I added in some hooks from Hobby Lobby to add some function to it. So the hooks are into the wood boards and that's where I hang like when I come in the door from work, my work jacket and my work bag hangs up on there. And then if I have like a purse on a different day, I just hang my purse there. And then it's right there where I need to walk out the door. Um, it's great for like a day if you're in and out a lot that day, you don't have to keep bringing your stuff upstairs and back down. Usually when I'm done with that purse for the day or the week, I go put it away upstairs, but um, it's really great for now. There are four hooks, so I could see us, you know, in the future having a hook like per family member if we have kids um, in this house and, you know, just having like a hook for everybody's bag or backpack or whatever. Um, it's definitely very practical, I think. Two is right behind me and it is our living room. So this includes a couple of DIYs, but the shelves that we did and the mantle and like fireplace surround that we did, this project we did over a couple of weekends. The shelves were pretty simple. We just bought wood from Home Depot. I stained them and I believe it's dark walnut is the stain that's on my um, shelves. And we got some black brackets from Home Depot. These were like a little bit of a pricier bracket, but they look really nice and they hold up really well. Um, and I do fill them with decor, so they need to be sturdy shelves. So we did that and that obviously was quite the project because we had to make sure the shelves were evenly spaced and even like on both sides. Somehow we did it and it actually worked out really well. Um, and then the fireplace surround is actually a brick paneling. So Home Depot has these like panels of like accent walls. I know they have like, I think a shiplap one, they have beadboard panel, um, and then they have this faux brick panel. And I'll try to link it below um, from Home Depot or Lowe's, whoever has it. And I believe it was like $40, it was not very expensive. And all we did was cut, like we measured the space around our fireplace and then we just cut it out with, I think a jigsaw actually. Um, it wasn't the most precise measurement, but it fit. So we did that and then we used liquid nails to put it up against the fireplace and it was like a reddish color. I'll see if I can insert some pictures, um, but it was like a reddish brick color. So then once it was liquid nails adhered to the wall, I we did use some um, the nail gun to nail it in a little bit. And then I used a white paint. I think I just used a white paint that I had on hand. I'm not sure if it was like a wall paint or a furniture paint or what kind of paint it was, but it was just paint, white paint that I uh, mixed some water in with. And I took a paintbrush and kind of whitewash the brick a little bit, just like very thinly spread it over the brick to lighten it a little bit, um, because I read that that was something you should do. Honestly, I probably could have skipped that step. But then I took a mortar or, I think it's called mortar. It's just like a German schmear technique. Um, like I got a big tub of it and um, a like, I think it was like a metal little spatula thing and just went across the, um, the brick and kind of like a, it's called German schmear. So you're just like putting like big clumps of this stuff on and spreading it. And it's like a putty, like it looks very um, thick and it, 
I went across the whole thing and I would scrape a little bit harder in spots where I wanted a little bit more of that red to come through. Um, but I just went to town and just spread it all over. And then once it was dry, I think, I don't even think I sanded it, but you could sand it a little bit if you wanted more red to pop through, but I wanted it to be very um, whitewashed. So it's really dependent on your preference, but that was a super easy project to do. I could definitely see doing that on like, in like a half bath or, you know, even a full accent wall of that whitewashed brick. Um, it was super easy and it was really fun to like spread the mortar across it. So definitely recommend that one. And then my husband built a mantle out of just some wood. I don't know how he did it exactly. I know he had to make like a, basically like a ladder kind of thing that comes out from the wall. And then he made like a box, like a three-sided box that he put over the ladder and then um, screwed it in so that it was really sturdy in the wall because the, the base of it was um, nailed into or screwed into studs. So he did that. You can't claim that I DIY'd that part. He did that, I did stain it though in that same dark walnut stain. But overall, just the difference that this made in our living room was huge. So I'll try to put before and after photos if I can find any. Um, it definitely, you could see it in our empty house tour, which I'll link that below as well. From when we first moved in, you could see what the space looked like totally bare versus how it looks now. And I think if you move into a builder grade home and you're looking to make it a little bit more custom and a little bit more, um, have a little bit more character, this is definitely something that's pretty easy to do. We are not professionals by any means. Um, we learn everything from YouTube. So if we could do it, y'all could too. And lastly, my number one favorite DIY I have ever done I wonder if y'all could guess based on other videos, but my favorite piece and the project that I think I spent the most time on that I feel the most pride in is definitely my dining room table. So the story goes, I've said it multiple times, um, we found this table on Facebook Marketplace for, I believe it was like 275. And it's a, it's a 80 inch, I think it's 80 inches with both leaves in it. There's two leaves um, and it's 80 inches fully extended with eight chairs, two of which have like arms. And it was a Temple Stewart piece that was just beautiful. Absolutely very sturdy wood, but it was that orangey kind of stain that is just a little bit dated. It's not really my style. So, but I loved the the shape of it. I loved that kind of farmhouse character it had. I love that it was a four, like four post without like a thing in the middle. I don't like tables like that necessarily. Um, and then the chairs were the exact like style that I like. So this was a project that was a labor of love. The chairs and the base of the table were no big deal. I just chalk painted them with Rust-Oleum linen white. I think it was super easy. Um, that part but the top of the table i wanted to be a stained wood so i had to strip the top with citrus strip get all that gunk off i sanded it for days i sanded that table like crazy and um unfortunately the wood under the stain the original stain was very uneven so i had to go darker with the stain than i was hoping because otherwise it was going to look patchy just because that the wood was uneven the, the colors in the wood or i just did something wrong it could go either way. But anyways, so I stripped it, I sanded it, and I um, stained it with like a gray, I think it was called like weathered gray stain. And I just did a, a, several layers of this because again, I had to go a little bit deeper. So I really love it. It is deeper than I was thinking I was gonna go, but it's a nice neutral toned stain that's not too orange. Um, and it's really not too gray either. It goes really well with our floors, which I would say are neutral to cool, possibly um, in like tone. But it also looks really good with the very warm dark walnut table that's in our entryway. So I love my dining room table. I sealed it with a with a glossy polyurethane. Again, I really like the glossy finish just because I feel like it looks done. And I feel like when I finish something with a satin finish, it doesn't feel the same and really durable. I don't know if that's just me, but anyways, so my dining room table is my favorite, favorite DIY I've ever done. That table will go with me everywhere that I ever go and move or whatever. That table will be with me forever. I always joke about that, but it took me a lot of time to do all the steps. 
So anyways, I will also link my dining room reveal video down below. I believe I expanded a little bit more about the table in that video, which I did a year, at least a year ago. So it's been a while, um, but that is it y'all. Those are my top DIYs, in my opinion, that I've done in my house. I hope it inspires you again to just a little bit creative, think outside the box and be brave to try new things. There's nothing that you can't do. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm not even like an artist or really good at that kind of thing, but all you have to do is go for it. And then every time you'll get a little bit better at it. So a really good thing to do is buy like a cheap piece at the thrift store and try to refinish that or paint it and just get the hang of it and then when you're doing a bigger piece with a little bit more at stake like something that costs a little bit more to start with um, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable painting it or sanding it or whatever it is that you're doing to it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I wanted to do a sit down video today because unfortunately not every week can be a shopping haul, right? We can't go shopping every week. Um, that would not exactly be in the budget or realistic and practical. And honestly, with our backyard project that we have going on, we I need to cool it on the shopping, you know what I'm saying? So um, that is coming along really well. They have done the framing for our um, covered patio and the cement because I told you all we were extending our patio. So they've done those two pieces. We're still waiting on roofing, electrical, um, paint. I think we're gonna paint it ourselves to save money. I'm not sure yet though. And then once that is all done, then I'll start moving furniture and decorating and sharing that with y'all. I'm really excited to share like a before and after of our backyard, um, but those things take time. So hopefully maybe in a few weeks, we'll have that video up for y'all. Next week, I believe I am taking y'all to a local nursery and doing some plant shopping and just a nursery tour because apparently this place is very well known in the North Georgia area. And apparently they have really great um, deals on plants. So I might do some like hanging baskets and things for my porch um, in the front. We'll see about that. But let me know what else y'all would like to see from me next. I hope y'all are having a great week and enjoying hopefully some spring weather, depending on where you live. Um, I'm grateful that you're here and I will see you next Tuesday in a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Bye.